Uh, one, two, three, four, four. Can you hear me? What, what, what a slick handover, fantastic. <laughs> Before I get onto the, the technical bits, um, because one of my key points is actually this isn't really about technology. Technology is a tool. Technology is a new version of the megaphone. It's your message only louder and to more people and quicker and in more places. What people really want is face-to-face, head-to-head communication. This is how people have communicated through most of history by one person talking to another person. And this is still the most effective way of communicating. If somebody recommends um, you know, the latest washing machine or the latest movie, or they say that they like somebody or dislike somebody, or tell you a story about how somebody has offended them or how they've done really good service to them, this is what you remember. My friend said this to me, therefore I believe it. And the, uh, the way that modern technology has harnessed this is it's using, te it's, it's using technology in the service of, of basically face-to-face -face communication, which is something that is absolutely as old as the hills and will continue to be so. So let's go back to, um, let's inject a cultural dimension here. Ancient Greece, right, 2,500 years ago. They added a few things to communication, the way it worked. The first thing was... Uh, oh yes, peers, that's what they are, we know about that, don't we? Look at this guy. He's called Demosthenes. He lived in 4th century Athens, 4th century BC Athens, and he was one of the first public speakers. They developed this uh, convention of uh, oratory. This was the first time that you had a special group of people who got up professionally and knew about public speaking. And um, as you see, he was in so much in demand that they even dragged him out of the shower to uh, do more speaking. Yeah, that's, a, that's a soap he's holding there. And um, he said he didn't have a minute's peace. The interesting thing about that was, this was the first speaking was something that everyone did. Um, but for the first time, this was the province of a special group. So what happens when that happens is you, you, you start having conventions. You start using special language, special flowery language in order to communicate in that way. Um, and it sort of separates you, so sometimes it's necessary because you've got to stand up in front of large groups and speak to the back of the room, and so you have to be slightly different. Um, but it's, it can get uh, carried away. Um, and then the, hold that thought for a minute because I'm going to tell you about another group that the ancient Greeks introduced, and that was actors. They also discovered that some people are really, really good at pretending. They're actually good at pretending to be somebody else. And uh, they, you can actually influence human emotions very, very well, very, very effectively like this. You can, you can get thousands of people to come and watch two people pretending to be somebody else. And that is pretty much all you've got. But those are the basic ingredients of communications. You have a conversation among friends. You have official spokespeople and orators who speak in a special way it's on special occasions. And you have people pretending to be somebody else. So there we are with corporate video. So you think, uh, right, OK, I'm going to make a video for my company. Which of these techniques would be most effective for me? You know, I have, I have the choice of uh, two and a half thousand years of communication <coughs> history. And I have all these technologies at my disposal. Which one is the most effective? And it's still a guy talking to his neighbour. 